He trained to be a doctor, but couldn't stand watching surgery. He studied to be a clergyman, but that didn't work out either. Instead, he ended up shocking the world with an idea, an hypothesis of where we all come from. Charles Darwin and his theory of evolution. In spite of my formal training in physics and my love of Galileo and Copernicus, I might just put Charles Darwin a notch above each of them. Because the Darwinian evolution affects human beings and the knowledge of where we came from much more directly, than Galileo or even Copernicus or Einstein. It was a discovery that almost didn't happen. When the British Royal Navy planned a scientific expedition, Darwin was offered a position as naturalist. His father didn't want him to go. The captain wasn't eager to have him along either. But at the last minute, Darwin went aboard. As the HMS Beagle traveled down the coast of South America, the young man marveled at the incredible variety of plants and animals he saw. Here was an individual who fundamentally looked at the world. He didn't have elaborate instrumentation. He wasn't looking out at the stars. He wasn't looking with a microscope into the cell. He was just looking. It was while observing the birds of the Galapagos Islands that Darwin made his most famous discovery. He counted 13 different types of finch on separate islands, some with long beaks, some with short ones, all sorts of variations. He wondered if nature had, over generations, adjusted the finches in varying ways to cope with their surroundings. He began to come up with the idea of natural selection, that species tend to perish uh, if they're not well adapted to their environment, and they tend to thrive and reproduce if they are. It was, Darwin reasoned, the survival of the fittest or the swiftest, the one with the longest neck or sharpest beak. Over thousands and thousands of years, that was the way species evolved. Darwin kept researching until he was 50. In 1859, he finally published Origin of Species, which laid out his theory of evolution. The book sold out in a day, and the controversy began. In 19th century Victorian England, the book of Genesis was gospel, and the gospel said that God created Earth's creatures. Evolution seemed to fly right in the face of the Bible. The commotion would only grow louder when Darwin announced that the human species was a product of the evolutionary process too. That man was descended from apes and monkeys was an almost unthinkable notion in Darwin's day. The concept of the thought of evolving from some substandard creature or what you think to be substandard is almost an insult to people. And, you know, a lot of people don't want to hear that. And sorry, but that's the way it is. Today, Darwin's ideas are widely accepted, and yet they remain controversial. For they permanently dethroned man from his central place in the history of the Earth. <laughs>